Today, we're going to show you how to grow mushrooms out of a bucket. We recommend this technique for beginners, especially if it's your first time growing mushrooms. It's perfect if you've used one of our grow kits or spray and grow bags, have a rough idea of how the process works and want to scale up the amount of mushrooms that you want to grow. The buckets are reusable, so you can do this again and again and have fresh mushrooms whenever you want. With this method, you'll be able to grow all oysters that are side fruiting. Keep in mind though, you won't be able to grow any top fruiting varieties like king oyster. All oysters have varying temperatures they like to grow in, so select the one that's best suited for the climate that you're in. You can also grow lions made from a bucket, which we'll cover in another video. Throughout this video, we are going to cover the materials you'll need, how to choose your substrate and prepare it through pasteurization, and how to build your buckets to get them ready to grow from. Then we'll cover all the steps of growing your mycelium and mushrooms, which are inoculation, colonization, and fruiting. Now let's talk about the materials you'll need. To do this, we're going to need food grade buckets, which you can find at Bunnings. We're showing you with a five litre bucket and a 20 litre bucket. Calcium hydroxide to pasteurize our substrate. A scale and a bowl to measure it out. Some pH test strips so that we can measure the pH of the water that we're going to use to pasteurize our substrate. A drill and a drill bit to drill out the holes for our mushrooms. The drill bit needs to be anywhere from five to six millimeters. Substrate for our mycelium. So today we're using sugarcane mulch. Grain spawn something to drain our growth medium. So for this, we're using a sunshade cloth in a milk crate and a plastic container to pasteurize our substrate. We've chosen to go with organic sugarcane mulch because it's a lot easier to get your hands on. You can also use grain straw for this. It's going to be a lot more nutritious, however, a lot harder to get your hands on. Now we're going to talk about pasteurization. Pasteurization is when we kill all the organisms that reside in our substrate. We can either do a hot water pasteurization, which utilizes boiling hot water to kill the organisms. This usually takes about three hours. We can also do a cold water pasteurization. It utilizes calcium hydroxide to change the pH level of the water to be more basic, also killing the organisms. Pasteurization can only be done on substrates that are not nutritious. Agriculture waste like sugarcane, mulch or straw are perfect for this. More nutritious ingredients such as sawdust pellets or soy haul would require a super pasteurization through steam or a double pasteurization, which is boiling and using calcium hydroxide or sterilization. We will only be covering the cold water pasteurization technique, also known as a lime bath. Keep in mind, you can also use boiling water for this. If you do, you only need to soak it for three to four hours as the boiling water will lead to faster changes in the pH level. It all comes down to how long the pH level takes to come back to neutral. Through cold water pasteurization with calcium hydroxide, it will take about 24 hours. If you're using boiling hot water with calcium hydroxide, it will take three to four. Also with adding boiling hot water to calcium hydroxide, along with the pH level being very basic killing the organisms, you also have the added temperature of the boiling water helping to kill the organisms. If you're using grain straw for this, make sure to cut it between one to two inches so it's a lot easier to compact into the bucket. This is what our sugarcane mulch looks like. It's already quite small, so no need to cut it into smaller pieces. We're going to grab our plastic container and fill it up with water. I used 30 litres for this. Then we're going to measure out our calcium hydroxide. We need to measure out 5 grams of calcium hydroxide per 1 litre of water. So for 30 litres, I'm measuring out 150 grams. We're going to put it in the water, stir it in, and this should bring the pH to 14 which is going to help to pasteurize our mulch. We're going to check this with a pH strip, dip it in, and check that it's at a pH of 14. Now we're going to fill up the buckets to measure out how much mulch we need. In addition to this, I'd recommend putting in a little bit more mulch because when it's wet, it compacts a little bit more than when it's dry. We're going to put it in the water and push it down. And then we're going to get something that's going to help us submerge it down under the water and keep it there. So for this one, I used a lid for a container that's slightly smaller than this one, so it fit really nice and tight. Then I put a bucket full of water on top to help keep it submerged. We're going to leave this to pasteurize for 24 hours or when the pH goes from 14 to seven. 
After it goes to seven, it's no longer pasteurizing and we risk contamination from that point on. When you pasteurize something, you don't kill the spores, you only kill the organisms. But when we leave it over 24 hours, we give the spores enough time to germinate. And when that happens, it's going to come in contact with the basic water, which is going to kill it. And it's going to give us more chance of growing our mycelium before anything else grows. Now we're going to talk about how to make the buckets. We're going to start off with the 5 litre bucket, we want to be careful not to drill too many holes. If we drill too many holes, our mycelium is going to spread nutrition over too many different sources. This will restrict how big our mushrooms can grow. So because of that, we want to keep it to a small amount of holes, so we can concentrate the amount of nutrition into the mushrooms we want to grow. So for the 5 litre bucket, we're going to stick to two holes. We don't want to drill any holes on the bottom of the bucket because it makes our growth medium more susceptible to contamination. If we drain it properly before we put it in the bucket, we won't get any pools of water on the bottom. We want to be careful not to drill the holes too close to the handle because when the mushrooms grow, the handle might get in the way and break the mushrooms. We want to be careful not to drill the holes too low to the ground so our mushrooms don't touch the ground when they grow or if we drill them too high, we run the risk of them interfering with any mushrooms above if we're stacking buckets. So for this one, we're going to drill them in the middle of the bucket. I'm going to mark out the first hole, then give it a spin and mark out the second. If we drill the holes too big, again we risk spreading nutrition over too many different mushrooms. So we're going to stick to five or six millimeters. I'm going to put a piece of tape as a stopper above the six millimeter mark. And now it's time to start drilling the holes. Then to clean it up, I'm giving it a spray with isopropyl alcohol so the permanent marker comes off. And then I'm going to cut off a few pieces of micropore tape to stick over the holes. This is going to help protect them from contamination while it colonizes. Now we're going to prepare our 20 litre bucket. Because it's a lot bigger than the 5 litre, we're going to drill 8 holes. We're going to do 4 on top and 4 on the bottom. Again being mindful not to drill them too close to the ground or high up if we're stacking buckets. We don't want to align the top holes with the bottom holes because when they grow they may interfere with each other so we want to offset them slightly. Again making sure not to be too close to the handle. I'm just using a pen to mark out the holes from the bottom so that each one of my holes are exactly the same height. And for the top holes, I'm drilling them in between the spaces of the bottom holes. There's a natural line on the bucket that I'm following, which allows me to measure them in line with each other. And now we're going to start drilling the holes. And then I'm going to wipe off the marks. We're going to cover four of these holes with micropore tape to reduce the chance of contamination. And then we're going to cover the other four with duct tape so it doesn't fruit from those holes. These are reserved for the second flush. When we're ready for the second flush, that's where we're going to take the tape off and fruit it from those holes. It's going to be a lot quicker than trying to get a second flush out of the first four holes. Now we're going to put the micropore tape on and the duct tape. Because this hole is so close to the handle, I'm going to tape it down so it doesn't come up and damage the mushrooms when they grow. From now on, we're going to lift the buckets from these handles. And this is what they look like. Now we're going to talk about how to drain and inoculate the substrate into the buckets. We've left this to pasteurize for 24 hours. After the first day, it starts to ferment, which makes it easier for our mycelium to digest. After 24 hours, the pH is going to drop from 14 to seven, which is always good to check with a pH strip. Then I'm going to drain it and put it into the mesh so it can fully drain off. This takes anywhere from three to five hours. To make sure that our substrate is fully drained, we want to give it a good squeeze. We don't want to see any droplets fall out of it. If we do, that means we need to let it drain for a little bit longer. If it's too wet, then we risk contamination growing on our substrate before our mycelium can fully colonize it. Now it's time to put the grain spawn into the substrate. Keep in mind, you can also use sawdust spawn instead of grain spawn, which will yield more mushrooms. 
The reason being is oysters are wood-loving mushrooms and sawdust spawn will give them more nutrition. It's also a cheaper substrate, however keep in mind, being that it only comes in 3 kilogram bags, it may be more expensive to ship than grain spawn, however it might be more economical if you're going to inoculate a lot of buckets. There are a few drawbacks that you need to be aware of. Our sawdust spawn comes in 3 kilogram bags, and we recommend 250 grams of sawdust spawn for a 20 litre bucket. So if you're not intending to inoculate 12 or more buckets, you'll have some spawn left over. Or if you're intending to inoculate more than one species of oyster, keep in mind that you'll need to inoculate 12 buckets with the same species. We also make our sawdust spawn to order, so it will take 2-3 to three weeks to arrive because that's how long it takes to colonise. We're going to show you how to do it with grain spawn, however keep in mind if you're using sawdust spawn, use the same ratio to inoculate the substrate. We want to give the bag a wipe with 70% isopropyl alcohol to keep everything as sterile as possible. Then we're going to break it up in the bag. Wipe the scissors, cut the bag, and mix it into our substrate. We're looking anywhere between 10 to 25% grain to substrate ratio. If you're a beginner, it's best to put a little bit more than needed so that it colonizes quicker and you have less chance of contamination. And then we're going to mix it in. This is a bit of a messy process, but we want to persist until it's all mixed in. Then we're going to wipe the buckets with isopropyl alcohol and fill them. We want to push it down, not too hard, but enough to make it a little bit firm. This is going to simulate the conditions found in nature. Fill it right to the top and put the lid on. Then we want to label it. We want to put the strain of the mushroom and the date we inoculated it, so we know how long it's been colonising for. And then we're going to do the same with the small bucket. If you're using sawdust spawn and you've got some left over, you can simply put it in a Ziploc bag and leave it to colonise. You'll need to put a hole in it. Cover the hole with micropore tape and the mushrooms will grow through the hole. This way, you won't waste any spawn. And you can do the same with your leftover inoculated substrate. You can experiment with this to grow it in any container that you find around the house. Now we're going to talk about the colonisation stage. While these buckets are colonising, we want to put them in a warm, dark room, anywhere from two to four weeks, until you start to see mushrooms grow. The ideal temperature for colonisation is 22 degrees. We also want it to be a well-ventilated area so our mycelium can breathe, so don't put it in a cupboard. We want to check up on it periodically throughout that time to make sure no contamination has grown. Now let's talk about fruiting your mushrooms. Once you see that it's fully colonised, we want to start spraying the holes with an atomizer or a spray bottle so that we keep it moist and humid, triggering baby mushrooms, also known as pins, to start forming. Once you see this happen, we want to stop spraying. We also want to keep it in a humid environment to trigger pins to grow. Baby mushrooms are very tough, so they'll break through the micropore tape on their own. All you have to do is watch them grow. The mushrooms shown in the time-lapse are blue pearl oyster, however because of the amount of light used in the studio, they appear more off-white. Giving them less light exposure will give it more of a bluish tone. Keeping them in a humid environment will also keep them moist and prevent them from drying out. It's also important to keep them out of the direct airflow of a fan or an air conditioner so that it doesn't dry out. We also want to keep them out of any direct sunlight as it'll rise the temperature to above what's ideal. And all we have to do now is watch them grow. We want to harvest the mushrooms when the caps are still downturned like this. If we leave them to curve upright like this, we've left them for too long. From here, they've started to release spores, which causes their shelf life to decrease dramatically. After you've harvested the first flush, you can get it ready for the second. On the small bucket, we need to get the same holes ready to grow more mushrooms. The mycelium has calcified over the hole from the first flush, so we need to get rid of it. Grab a knife, I'm using a scalpel for this and sanitize it with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Leave it for a minute, and then dig the mycelium out from the holes. 
Because the bucket is fully colonized and developed an immune system, we don't need to cover the holes with micropore tape. All we need to do from here is let it grow. We don't need to do this on the big bucket because we have four holes that have been taped up ready to fruit. All we need to do is remove the tape. And then we leave it to grow. I hope you guys enjoy growing your own mushrooms from buckets at home. Give this video a like and subscribe to see more. Thank you.